Adam, on your uh, most recent U2 tour, uh, you were planning on this big HBO special uh, for Innocence and Experience, and then uh, some big emotional events happened. Can you just tell, walk us through what happened there uh, right before you were going to record this special? Yeah, we were in Paris doing the, the rehearsals uh, the night before the show we were going to record. We were doing camera blocking and all that stuff that you have to do when you're filming. And halfway through the rehearsals that evening, uh, we got a message to kind of move off the stage and move out of the building and, uh, you know, get into the cars and go back to the hotel. And there was very little further information. So I think I got on the BBC website and heard that there, there had been the bombs in the Stade de France at the football game and that there were shootings throughout the city at that point. They, they, they really didn't have very clear news. So that was a very, very scary time. Uh, we went back to the hotel and we just kind of watched it on on the BBC until we kind of knew what the facts were. But uh, it was a terrible thing to happen in Paris, which is such a great kind of hospitable city. And as you went back and and did the actual concert to, to finish things up, how how did how were all of you affected emotionally and so forth? Well, you know, immediately after the the attacks, um, Paris sort of closed down for a week of mourning. So um, everything was cancelled, the shows were cancelled, um, and eventually we went back to the mayor's department and said, we'd really like to try and, and do this show this year. We'd, we'd like to reschedule it for within a month of, of when we were supposed to do it. And, you know, at the time there was this question of whether Paris was safe to, to stage a big event like that again. And the mayor was very keen that we put on the show and that it was seen as, you know, Paris is back open for business again. So I think it, it, it was the right thing to do. Everyone that came to the show, you know, everyone I think came out for, with mixed feelings. It was the first time there'd been a, a very big gathering for music since the atrocity at, at, at a, a smaller gig um, of music fans. And, you know, we, we, we were in touch with the Eagles of Death Metal. We encouraged them to come back to the city and to, to come on stage and eventually, you know, play that concert um, effectively that they'd been denied playing, um, you know, a month previous. When you're putting together a new tour and all of you are discussing it and figuring it all out, how, how do you go about deciding, okay, these are the older songs we want to do, these are the newer songs we want to do, what, what's the process like? Uh, you know, it, it, it's it's tricky. It is very difficult because there's so much material that, you know, has a place in the show that means a lot to people. And we kind of start out with what songs are we going to play off the new record? And we always want to play 10 songs off the new record. But we settle on what are we missing in our live show? What can we kind of fit in? So usually we, we look at, you know, six to eight songs that we're excited about playing from the new record. And then we, we sort of gradually bring the older material back into the set. I mean, sometimes, you know, there's a narrative arc within the set. So certain songs from certain periods make more sense. With this show, it was a narrative about where we came from. Um, in Dublin, when, when we were innocent in our, in our teens, we were 18 year olds. Uh, was when we first got into the band. Well, actually, 16. Um, we, we released our first record when we were 18. And it was really looking at where we came from with, you know, there was just a light bulb over our heads for the first couple of numbers. It was very much like a punk gig, very stripped down um, and just energy. And that was that was how we started the show. And then it, it, it kind of fell into the relationships um, the key events in, in particularly Bono's life that shaped him, the death of his mother, um, where he grew up on Cedarwood Road and, and his friends. Um, and then, and that's sort of the first half of the show. And then we kind of, we, we, we kind of move on and we go back to the material from Joshua Tree and Acton Baby and, oh, what was that? I don't know, <laughs> but it didn't crash, so we're good. Sorry, Chris, pause one second. Okay. There you go. Okay. Apologies. Okay. No problem. We're, we can keep going. Okay. Um, well, I, that was the end of my point, really, was that, you know, after, 
after we, we get through the, that new material that deals with the innocence that we had back then in Dublin um, and how Dublin, you know, gave us this unique view on the world that was able, it was, we were able to go out and conquer the world with that unique view. Um, and sometimes, you know, you don't realize how powerful that innocence was until you look back on it and you say, huh, that got us to where we are now. And that was really what the show was about, was, was to kind of try and show how we had grown into the people and the band that we are now. All these years when you're working on a new album or a new tour, I mean, you know, talking back, you know, behind the scenes, I mean, if there's a major disagreement, who, what happens? How do you, how do you resolve that? Well, you know, there aren't major disagreements uh, because, you know, we, we're all, we're all conspirators in moving the thing forward. And, you know, our, our, our reason for getting up in the morning is for the songs. You know, it's for those songs and for that, for the live show and being able to get back out there. So if someone has a strong point of view, um, that's kind of a good thing because it means that they believe in something. And equally, if somebody has a strong point of view to the negative, that's that's worth taking into account as well. And the way we, I think the way we look at it now is, you know, this system has worked for about 40 years. So, you know, that's longer than most business relationships, longer than most marriages, almost as long as most friendships, you know. So, so we figure the, the, the system that we operate works okay. It's not worked for any other band in the history of rock bands, though. They, they have those disagreements, and then suddenly uh, you see them uh, dissolve. Well, I, I think what's, what's unique about you two, uh, you know, I, I can't comment on, on, on the way other bands do things, but, you know, we, we kind of had friendship before we had musicianship. And we, as we developed musicianship and, and, and a sense of business, we were advised by our, our, our original manager, Paul McGuinness, that in order to consolidate the relationships within the band, it might be wise if we had an equal share in, in, in the rewards. And that was pretty much the way we, we developed. We developed with, you know, equal reward and, um, you know, hopefully equal effort from, from everyone. And, and we kind of have remained true to that. We're an awards website. I want to ask you a couple of awards questions. What What's your first big award show memory? You know, I, I my my most uh, significant award show memory is probably the Grammys for the Joshua Tree. You know, uh, and we came away. I think we came away with three or four that night, um, and it was. You know, we were still very young. We were we we, we were uh, twenty seven. It was our fourth or fifth. It was our fifth album. Um, it was amazing. It was it was absolutely amazing. What album of the year that year, right? Uh, and we did, and song of the year, and um, whole host of things. That um, more than anything, I mean, you were known as a great touring band, and everybody was enjoying the albums. But that that particular award show uh, and getting those particular awards that that shot you more into the stratosphere, right? That, that was, I mean, that was when we had the cover of Time magazine. Um, it was when, you know, I think, I think music kind of changed around that time. Suddenly there were a lot of new bands that were replacing, I guess, what you'd call the hair bands of the day. You know, there was, you know, that soft rock metal sound that had been a staple of American radio uh, for so long, you know, from, from the 70s onwards. Uh, there, there was a sort of a sea change and bands like us and In Excess were being played on the radio and a lot of English bands, I think Duran Duran, were, were breaking America. It was, it was a real change of, 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 of leadership in a sense. And then almost 20 years later, you went Album of the Year again uh, for um, How to Dismantle. Um, that's, it's truly amazing to have a band that that has that kind of staying power, not only on tour, but also critically and within the industry. Well, we've been very, very lucky. I mean, I'm, I don't know why we've managed to kind of stay current. I mean, we, we try hard to listen 
to what's happening. We try hard to keep up, but somehow we manage to take our audience with us every time we kind of we kind of have an ambition to reach further with our music. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in uh, 2005. Because you started so young, you're one of the youngest groups of people to ever go into the Hall of Fame, uh, go in on your first year of eligibility, obviously. What, just can you talk about that experience of that night? Well, you know, it's interesting that you say uh, we, we were almost too young because we definitely felt too young to be in, inducted at that point. But, you know, at the same time, it was uh, an amazing honor to be fast tracked and to be honored. Um, at the you know the earliest moment in our career that that we could be honored um you know the hall of fame is extraordinary to be in that room with all those people and to be a part of that history and you know that is that is for us um that was how we learned about america through music so the 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 music hall of fame is america for us so um you know there's there's some really great people that have pushed the boundaries as a part of that whole movement. And then just a few years ago, one of my favorite performances ever of yours, and I've seen so many concerts and, and uh, listened to the albums obviously over and over, but the, uh, the Rock Hall of Fame big two night concert in New York, where you had a whole section of the night and you got to invite out uh, on stage with you some other Hall of Famers. Well, that, that whole weekend must have been just an amazing experience. Well, you know, that was a lot of fun. It was it was towards the end of our tour. Um, so, you know, the band was playing really well at the time. And um, I think Mick Jagger uh, got in touch. He wanted to do a tune with us. Uh, Bruce Springsteen uh, was willing to do a tune. Uh, Patti Smith was willing to do a tune. So it was like, it was like all the greats, all the people that influenced us and, and all the people that we would want to be on a stage with asking us to, to, to be their band for the night. So, uh, you know, we, we, got, we, got to play, we got to play in everyone's band that night. It was fantastic. Yeah, just a, a, an all-star weekend all the way around. Um, on the film side, you've been up at the Golden Globes five times, won a couple there, been up at the uh, Oscars a couple of times. How is the Oscar experience different than anything else probably you've ever done? Well, you know, you 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 play second to, to the movies there. You know, I, I think, you know, it's great for music to be honored at the Oscars. It's great for contemporary musicians, you know, that are working in the songwriting mode as opposed to, to score, um, to be able to, to be in that room and be on that stage. Um, you know, it, it's, it's humbling and there's always a lot of really great musicians there. There's a lot of very great nominees. Um, we've been nominated twice um, and we haven't walked away with an Oscar, but you know, we're still young. Oh, good. That means uh, maybe something in the works uh, for another movie down the road. Uh, you know, we're, 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 we'll be back. We're, we're not going to give up on, we're not going to give up on doing tracks for movies. You know, it's uh, it's something that we find very exciting to be able to mold what we do with a big movie release um, and just kind of connect people. Well, we hope to see you at the Emmy Awards in a few months. Maybe we can uh, help you get a TV award uh, down the road here. It yes. certainly was a great variety special and uh, really appreciate your time. Like I said, I've been listening and watching for so many years. Well, thank you very much for your time and thank you very much for, for, for us being a part of this show and being nominated.